derivative art journal page, missing piece, and a new embossed drippage technique. Glycerin has become my new art journal product to explore lately. I used it now to emboss large areas on my pages and in the process discovered that it does have a capability to prevent glossy art journal pages from sticking together. This week as I was working on some of my art journal pages that will be swapped out, I discovered another fun and very very messy embossing technique with glycerin. I have not seen this done yet so I thought I would do a quick derivative art journal page in my little altered book to demonstrate it for you. Yes, it is messy and please, please, no comments instructing me the correct way to emboss. I love to explore new techniques and ways to use my art products. That is one of the purposes of my art journaling. I think that I've just begun to touch the surface of this technique. Come, watch me emboss some drippage. Hi, I am ready to do another page in my little book that I've been reading over the holidays. You can see as I've, I've finished the book now, the first page, the first layout I did was here and I called it When I Was Nine. But as I was reading the book, I went to the back and I made a list of phrases that I thought would be fun to art journal. So I'm ready to work on my next page, and I've already have gessoed the page. I used a coat of black gesso, followed by some folk art metallic um, blue. This is really a pretty blue. It doesn't say what color, it's just a blue color. It just says metallic acrylic paint. But you, as you can see, it comes out very pretty. Now, the quote that I chose, I'm not going to read the quote. I'm a bit wary about copyright violations by reading all the quotes out of these books, even though if it's a short phrase, yeah, I might get away with it. But I just don't want to get in trouble with reading quotes. <laughs> but I will say that the quote refers to an incomplete puzzle, feeling like an incomplete puzzle piece. And... Uh, um, like a part of me was missing. And I think that I'm going to refer to that. And I've been looking at some old photographs that I have. This is a cabinet card. I obviously got it at an antique store or a, a flea market. I don't know if that's a little girl or a little boy, but this is obviously a little, a little boy. And I was thinking that it would be fun to draw a puzzle piece around him and cut it out with my X-Acto knife and let that blue shine through and I might do the same thing there and then position them over on another side of the page. So that is what I'm going to work on. Also, I have been having too much fun with this glycerin. <laughs> You're going to see me try something new that I've Another new thing that I've discovered with glycerin, and I'll refer to that as I get to it. So uh, I'm kind of looking forward to doing this page. Again, I want it to be a very simple layout. It will have the picture. The picture is, it, the cardstock on this, or the board, is very thick. It's very stiff. So I, I probably will not get a lot of curves out of that puzzle piece. I'm not intending to but I hope to get some and uh, I'm not sure how that's going to go as I cut it. I hope, I hope I don't ruin it, but if I ruin it, my art journals are to experiment with. My art journals are expression, but they're mainly to experiment. I'm going to be doing some new techniques. First of all, I'm going to be cutting into my photograph, but I'm also going to be experimenting with something else with this glycerin. I'm really looking forward to that. So, Let's get to it. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to set this aside. Oh no, I'm not going to set this aside. I want to, with my glazing medium, again, I want to protect this. I, I let some of this blue paint fade into my phrase. I know what it says, and it's, it's readable if you 
look at it close but I'm just going to put a dab of glazing medium on there and I'm just going to coat this phrase so that any more paint that I get on it can be once you've glazed it you can pretty much wipe off anything that's on that page like if I got ink or something on there once it's been glazed it's pretty well I can come over this transparent base and remove it like if I accidentally put a streak of paint down there depending but that's my reason for doing that now I'm going to put this aside to dry and I'm done with my glazing medium so I'm put it over there now I want to work on this puzzle piece and uh, I'm going to eyeball the puzzle with my sharpie pen so I'm going to have to be pretty, pretty quick at it. Maybe I'll do a, a puzzle piece here first. I don't want very sharp curves. I want something pretty much because I'm going to cut this with my exacto knife off of here and it, it's going to have to be some some cuts. Maybe something like that. Okay, so I trace out my puzzle piece and cut it out and then I figure out where I want to position it around that little boy and trace it right directly on the picture with my Sharpie pen. Then I get out my craft knife and start cutting out that puzzle piece. Now I will say that as I'm cutting this, it looks a lot easier on this video than it really was. That cabinet card is a very strong card. I have to do several cuts and I just keep running my blade through that puzzle piece and all those curves. It's really not all that easy. I knew it was not going to be easy when I started it. I will say that I try to keep my hand that is not doing the cutting up above the cut so that uh, I do not slip. I don't do that all the time but most of the time I'm conscious of where my hand is. And as you look at my cutting mat you'll see all these little paper shards that come off of the photograph. It is not a it's not an easy process and I did use a new blade on this but that cabinet card is very strong but eventually I get it out and I'm happy with it I go get an emery board and start sanding down the edges so they'll be nice and smooth to work with if you put that puzzle piece back in that piece it's not going to fit exactly but that's not the purpose of this it looks like it fits and that's all that really needs to happen on this page layout I sand down the inside of the negative space on that photo clean it all off and uh, audition my pages in my book. Now you'll see on the right hand side there I use some painters tape to cover up my quote because I'm going to do some messy embossing on my page. But first I edge the puzzle piece with that same beautiful blue sapphire metallic paint and you'll see I do the same thing on the negative space on the cabinet card just to make it stand out a little bit more kinda of keep the puzzle piece clean because I want that picture of that little boy to show up here's where I'm painting the inside borders of that cabinet card of the puzzle piece there where I cut it out it's a little touches to the page makes it stand out Now I set all of that aside to dry and kind of addition where I wanted the picture to go on the page and now because I know I'm going to do some messy embossing I protect both sides of my book with wax paper. You see I'm wrapping the pages and securing that wax paper with rubber bands and uh, I get out my glycerin and look at how much glycerin I'm putting on that page and then I use my embossing powder and I'm doing the dripping technique and watch you can see that embossing powder start to drip down my page that is so fun 
I'm just having all sorts of fun doing that. And even as I heat that glycerin, it causes it to run and it draws the embossing powder down the page. And now it's that embossing powder is dry, but it looks very wet. It looks like that embossing powder is running down the page. I'm doing the same thing on the bottom, and you'll see where I look at that. Isn't that fun? Now I get a, a big blotch in there, and I think, oh, I've got a big blotch of my embossing powder. See right there? But then as I heat it, it just it causes everything to run down my page. And I'll Oh, I'm just having so much fun with this. I see so much potential in this. I'm not a person who likes drippage on my page, but boy, with this embossing powder, I ha that may change very soon. I'm just starting to explore it. Now I am edging my cabinet card with some washi tape, and because washi tape is a low-tack tape, I'm using some weld bond glue to secure it around the borders of my cabinet card. I do all four bo borders. And then I put another little extra strip at right below the bottom of the photograph just to frame it off really nice. I'm securing it on the back. That weld bond glue. And then here's where I put the extra piece on the bottom of the photograph. Now the embossing powder, I save it. Um, I do not put that back into my jar because it's very contaminated at this point. You'll see later where I actually use it. I'm putting score tape on the back of my photograph and of course removing the score tape is a double-sided tape. I'm removing the back. I'm getting ready to put it into my book. Get all the tape off. Put some at the top and the bottom just to frame it off. Make everything nice and even. So. Now I decide that I'm going to put it in the top left-hand corner of my book, and then I get out my glycerin and paint the inside of that puzzle piece and put that contaminated uh, embossing powder inside of the puzzle piece and kind of clean up around the photograph and dry off that, uh, emboss that embossing powder in the puzzle piece, and wow, do I like that. Now I want some red hearts, and I grab the closest thing at hand, and that happens to be an... Uh, a Sharpie package that I haven't even opened yet, and I cut two little red hearts out of there, put one inside of the puzzle piece, and one down on the lower side of the um, cabinet card. And then I take my puzzle piece that I cut out, and I edge it with some red metallic paint. I'm doing that so it kind of coordinates with the red hearts, and it will also make the puzzle piece stand out just a little bit more on the other side of the page drying it off really good and you'll see where I put um, um, score tape on the back of that puzzle piece thinking that it's going to stick but that does not work too well and you'll see where I start to remove my painters tape off of the quote and my hum my hand um, bumps the puzzle piece and jars it out of place So there's where I'm removing the painter's tape. There, see how it, it that score tape just did not hold that puzzle piece. So I get out some weld bond glue. Weld bond glue holds a lot of things really secure. <laughs> get out my weld bond glue, put it on the back of the puzzle piece, and secure it on the page, and that works really well. There we go. Clean off around the glue around the edges. And then I put some extra glue on the right hand side of that cabinet card just to make sure that it's it also is secure on the other page. And I weight it down and let everything dry before I start to work on the page again. Now I'm ready to write the words that I want to put on the page. And I decide on the words uh, missing piece. Like the little boy is the missing piece out of that page. Now, the reason I chose Missing Piece is because in this story, this little boy is abandoned by his mother. And he, all his life, he feels like there's a piece 
missing out of his life like a missing puzzle piece and he's trying to fit everything together that's the the gist of this page layout I resort to using a sharpie paint pen I find that that worked the best I'm writing over the metallic and the embossed the embossed uh, drippage there put it everything aside to dry and then I come back and I outline the words missing piece with a black sharpie now you won't see it on this um, video but I do come back later after I've finished all my recording and I also trace around that quote with my black sharpie and around the puzzle piece you'll probably see that in uh, future videos when I do other layouts as I flip through the pages So I'm getting real close to being finished. I get out my black gesso and I edge the entire two page layout with my black gesso. I did that on that when I was nine page and I'll probably do that with all the pages that I do in this book just to keep um, it kind of ties the pages together. So I use up the rest of my gesso on a tag and see I used the rest of my contaminated embossing powder on that tag too. Clean everything off and show you where I am. Okay here's my finished page. The missing piece. I cut the little boy out of this photograph over here and I filled that with embossing powder and embossed it and put red hearts on there and here's the picture of the little boy who's the missing piece out of this puzzle in this book this little boy gets abandoned by his mother and the sentence says something to the the effect that he felt like there was a missing piece a missing puzzle piece in his life just waiting to be found. So I thought that would make a really nice layout. This is my embossed drippage up here and then I bordered it with black gesso. So I hope that you have enjoyed watching me do this page. I have some more pages that I want to do in this book. So if you've enjoyed watching this, please subscribe to my channel and I will see you on the next page.